Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist, and every week we talk to other therapists, hence the Shrink Wrap name. We wrap with shrinks or their ilk. And this week uh, we are in for uh, some razzle dazzle because. Uh, we have Dr. Daniel Lev. Welcome, Daniel. Nice to see you. Love to uh, razzle you. <laughs> a reprise <laughs> performance. Uh, but this time, we're going to focus on the use of hypnotism mm -hmm. yes, in various forms of therapy mm -hmm. with, with different problems. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So what do you use it for? It's not, not like, you know, where you're going to get up and bark like a dog, that kind of hypnotism. Well, I call that hypnotainment. Hypnotainment. You know, have you ever okay. been to like a, a bar or a show somewhere right. where you know you, the hypnotist is there and she says, "Come on up," and half a dozen people will come up or more. Some of them might be a little inebriated, and they get up there, right? And they, uh, you think that she's making them do things. Yeah. But you see, she tests them out first. She'll say, "Put your hands together." They put their hands. Now, now, pull your hands apart. Your hands can't pull apart, but pull them apart. Everybody goes like this. She says, thank you very much. You go sit down. So she selects out all the people who want to act silly because they know that's what the hypnotist does. And they're also somewhat hypnotizable. Mm. Uh, that is uh, stage hypnosis. I do clinical hypnosis. Okay. So if you've got a problem with uh, habits or chronic pain, especially stress, all kinds of difficulties, uh, even depression. It's very helpful for depression. Uh, self-esteem, any other problems that uh, in conjunction with other aspects of therapy, hypnosis is a very useful skill. So talk to me about the use uh, in depression because I have mm -hmm. quite a few clients mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. are coping with depression, trying to get out of depression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how would you use hypnosis? Well, hypnosis uh, is... Um, like I said, it's a skill. Mm -hmm. And in depression, there are a number of things that contribute to that problem. Uh, one might just be uh, getting out and doing things. Right. The person may feel no energy. Yeah. Uh, so I've worked with some folks with, with depression who want to start moving their body. Because we know when mm -hmm. you move your body, uh, your mood goes up. Yeah. And so we'll use hypnosis is a way to help them connect with their inner resources, to connect with their inner energy. And when you connect with your inner energy, you can't help but take a walk. So it's not like I'm saying with your aware mind, well, just get up and go out, because they've been trying to do that for a long time. Right. Instead, we'll just explore the aspects of moving one's body around. And you can use your imagination, and I'm just talking about some ideas. Uh, and as those ideas come, they might find some of those ideas interesting and their inner mind will take those ideas and they'll expand into a very pleasant experience. Uh, let me tell you for a moment what is hypnosis. Okay. We don't know. <laughs> we don't, there's no consensus, although there are many theories about what it is. But one way I like to explain it to people, instead of saying what it is, except maybe a, a, it's a, a way to use your brain in a way, we have many, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, a sort of energy or power in our brain to help us transform our behaviors and feelings. <clears throat> and they're there, and we can access them as you use hypnosis as a technique. We call it hypnosis. But the way I like to explain it is, it's what you do. So meditation, let's look at that really quickly. Meditation, relaxation, all kinds of things like that. You do two actions. And when you do these two actions, you actually change your physiology. It's called the relaxation response is right. one aspect of that. So when you do two things, the first thing you do is you let go and relax. So you're right. sitting, uh, maybe laying down and relaxing your body, even relaxing your mind, letting the thoughts come and go. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you do those two things, classic meditation. Let's say I'm focusing on my breathing here, and that's the one thing that I'm focusing on after I relax. That's... I focus on one thing. Hypnosis adds a third thing, and that is taking in ideas. Mm. So you're sitting there, and I'm saying, you know, you're sitting there relaxing, let's say. So and, should we do it? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, okay. why, yeah, why don't we do it? Uh, okay. But let me explain just really yeah. briefly. You're sitting there relaxing, and I might say, I'm not sure which one of those arms 
might feel lighter. Maybe the left arm or the right arm or the left elbow, whatever. Now, if you're sitting there and you're letting go and relaxing, you're focusing on my voice, mm -hmm. your inner mind, your brain will start taking that in because who doesn't want to have a nice feeling in their arms? Right. Uh, although you'll take that in, and I've done this with a number of people. They go into a deep, comfortable trance. Uh, it's kind of like a hypnotic state. Some people call it a trance. And when they come out, they feel great or whatever work we've done, uh, good things have happened. Um, but it's not automatic because I may say one of those arms feels great. And one guy I worked on, he went into this very deep trance. Oh, it was really great. And he came out and I said, how was he? He said, oh, this was great. It was wonderful. I said, well, how do your arms feel? Ah, nothing, but my left leg feels great. So for him, his brain took my words, translated them into his leg being, feeling nice and light and comfortable, okay? Was he having problems with his leg before? I can't remember why it went to his leg, but the uh -huh. important thing is this. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. Mm -hmm. So I can't make you do anything uh, against your will mm -hmm. or against your beliefs, mm -hmm. okay? Even something as, as simple as suggesting your arms feel such a way, well, some people will have a different experience, but it will be their own. So. Yeah, why don't we try a little bit of it? It's very, okay. it's very simple. Um, just let your eyes close if you want. Uh, there's so many different ways to do what's called an induction. It's just mm -hmm. an invitation to go into a bit of a trance. This is a very simple one. And you're sitting there, and it, you're already aware that the seat's holding you up. And you can be held up and feel comfortable at the same time, feel even relaxed while you're sitting there. That's right. Just notice your breath going in and out all naturally. And let me ask you just to imagine something. Imagine that as your breath is moving in and out, something interesting might be happening. And what I suggest to everyone is I'm suggesting to you is you don't have to make anything happen or look for anything in particular. Just notice. It's just noticing what's happening. For example, you might notice that as you breathe in, a nice feeling may start to form in your hands, perhaps the palms of your hands. Very nice. It might be warm or cool or light or heavy or, or something else. I'm not certain. But only you'll know. As you breathe in, you may notice a nice feeling filling the hands. That's right. And maybe as you breathe out, you'll notice that feeling might start to flow into your belly, let's say, or your body. It just kind of flows in. So as you inhale, it fills the palms, flows inside as you exhale. And I'm going to be quiet just for a moment while you're noticing what you notice. And as your inner mind, the deepest part of the deepest part of your brain, as your inner mind allows you and invites you inside to a very pleasant experience, your conscious or outside awareness may notice you're feeling quite comfortably relaxed. And knowing that we'll have to come back sooner than I normally would invite someone you can know that later on, when you're home, if you want, you can do this simple little practice of sitting comfortably, closing the eyes, and just noticing as the breath fills the palms and flows inside. Wonderful sensation. So I'm going to count from one all the way up to five to invite you back to the room. You can follow those numbers any way you want or return any way you want. One, two,
Two, leaving behind whatever you want to leave behind. Three, bringing back what you want to bring with you. Four, noticing the seat comfortably holding you up. And so some point after five, the eyes will eventually open, refreshed and comfortable. But take your time in returning to the room. Hi. Hi. I didn't <clears throat> look at the clock, but often I'll ask, how long did that feel? How many minutes did that feel like? Two or three. Yeah, I think it was more than that. And that's a normal thing that's it's called uh, time distortion. And clock time becomes different from brain time. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? How do you feel? Relaxed. Mm -hmm. What did you notice? What do you remember? Um, at one point, when you were talking about noticing a good feeling in my hands, I mm -hmm. felt a cool little tiny breeze on my palms, like mm -hmm. cooling them off. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I was aware of my breath. Mm -hmm. And um, what was nice is I did not, my mind wasn't wandering. Like, I do a lot of meditation on my own, mm -hmm. and, you know, thoughts come in and come out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what's nice, you know, because you have this very soothing voice. Oh, <laughs> one might say hypnotic. hypnotic. Uh, <laughs> um, it was easy mm -hmm. to... I didn't have that monkey mind thing going on where you're thinking of all mm -hmm. these thoughts. That was... I, I wasn't thinking of anything. Yeah. I was just yeah. listening and following the instructions paying attention, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. noticing. I like that word. Sometimes yeah. I think they should call meditation noticing. Yeah, it is. You know? Shikantaza, in a way, in the Japanese tradition. It's just sitting, but it's also just noticing. It's interesting you mentioned this with, the, with uh, meditation. Meditation, um, yes, we often get distracted quite a bit. Mm, yeah. But here, when you add that third object of focus, which is the words that are coming out of my mouth right. and your inner mind uses it, you're just too busy right, right. to yeah, focus too on, things on going distractions. On. And that's the really cool thing. And why is this used with pain or distress or anxiety or uh, depression is because you can tap into the elements of your, your brain that helps you feel so busy with these wonderful things. You don't have time to listen to those depressing thoughts, or to mm -hmm. listen to those anxious thoughts, or any of those things. Or the pain. Or the pain. You don't have time to listen to it because you're so busy doing this. And then, I'm, you probably feel nice for a while. I mm. call that the halo effect. Mm. When you come out of the, the, the hypnotic state, you're still a little bit in a hypnotic state. And as you're going through your day, it's kind of like you have this halo of a nice feeling. And the more you practice, because this is a skill, Mm -hmm. You just did all the work. I put a few words out. Yeah, so but you did the work. I'm not how how do I do it without your voice? How do I do it on my own? Mm -hmm. Right? Cuz I don't have that other thing Great. coming in. I mean, I could play a I know you want to talk to me more, so I won't ask you to do this, but what I would say right now if you were a client in the room and I we were moving into the self-hypnosis yeah. practice, I'd say close your eyes mm -hmm. and start to focus on your palms, just like we did. I'm going to be quiet while you do the same thing I just did with you. Okay. Or we, there are some, basically, uh, you are the hypnotist. And okay, it takes so a while to develop because the hard part is not to try too hard. So I worked with this woman. She was absolutely amazing woman. Uh, terrible pain in her low back and her knee, okay? Hobbling around. I used to work at Kaiser in the chronic pain program. They actually let me do hypnosis, which was very cool. And she would come in. She was a very good subject. And she came in and she sat in the seat. She was in terrible pain. Uh, and I would do things with her. And, and in no time, she wiped it out. I mean, it's a long story, so I won't tell the whole thing. But the piece of the story I want to tell you is one day she comes in. She says, I'm not sure it's working anymore. She says, what happened? Well, I turned the wrong way in the garage, turned my body, and I hurt. And as I'm going to the house, I'm trying to use hypnosis, but I keep thinking, but, but why is that happening? And then, then she tried again. Then why is that happening? So she kept trying too hard mm. to make something happen. Hypnosis, right, right, right. the way hypnosis works, whether I'm leading you or you're leading you, is you allow the experience. You replace desperate seeking with curious noticing. Hmm. 
I'm going to see what happens when I follow my breath. What am I going to notice? You're going to notice that we went to a break. We did. <laughs> Hawaii covers stories that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Kaui Lucas. For our show next time, we're doing a Think Tech special, Home Alone and Homeless Alone at Christmas. We want to learn more about the isolated, disconnected people alone in our community. Lots to come on Think Tech. Tune in 10.30 p.m. this Sunday. See you then. So, Daniel, mm -hmm. um, you were speaking about this client Mm -hmm. with the pain and it didn't work because she was trying too hard right so it's there's a balance there right yeah. between letting it happen and mm -hmm. wanting it to happen and trying you know, to force it to happen why would we do it if we didn't want to do something to make it happen right but the way hypnosis works is the way you put a baby to sleep when it's having a hard time you don't say go to sleep kid <laughs> Or whatever kid, you know. Now you tell me. Damn it, my kids mother are up. knows how to do hypnosis. Hypnosis is a word. You will call it different things. Yeah. Reading a storybook to a kid and then the what lion kid? Said, I'm reading with my wife every night. We, we're reading a chapter of War oh and Peace. I am out. Out. <laughs> and then the soldier said, you know, <laughs> you change your voice a little bit. But, but it's a natural state we all go into. Did you ever, like, drive across a bridge? You're talking with a friend. You get across the bridge. You don't quite remember the trip across the bridge. Oh. Yeah. Who, who was driving the car? Right. So your inner mind was driving the car. But right. if someone cut you off, it would let you know very fast through your amygdala, <laughs> oh, and you would come back. But um, it's a natural state, okay? Mm -hmm. But the way we get to it on purpose is to allow it to happen by just doing some of these things and noticing not pushing, but noticing. So I never, even though that is a form of hypnosis, in the count of three, you will be asleep. One, two, three. <laughs> and actually it worked with a lot of people back in the 50s. I saw some of these, these, these yeah. training films that are yeah. pretty amazing. But, but now it's, it's more helping the person find it themselves. And so it's an allowing and it's a training. Yeah. It's a skill. And as you learn the skill, you actually can apply it to a number of difficulties, even couples issues, okay? even to, to be able to calm, think straight, and then come back out. I call it a hypno-quickie. <laughs> I have a hypno-quickie. You can sit and just count from 10 down to one and just let yourself feel more and more relaxed. You know, some people use uh, visual imagination or other, you know, they'll imagine that they're slowly immersing in the, the ocean or in a hot tub or whatever. Uh, these, if all I these could things. use that, mm -hmm. like with couples, like mm -hmm. very often, some of the most mm -hmm. difficult couples mm -hmm. that I work with, mm -hmm. one partner is very expressive, intense, mm -hmm. emotional, mm -hmm. right? Like way up here. Right, right. And the other one is the opposite. Right. Very reserved, doesn't say a lot emotionally sort of which yeah. drives the intense one crazy yeah, yeah. It makes him or her even you know, for some reason it's more often the her yeah I gotta be careful with that but right sure <laughs> it's not always like that but and the less response they're getting from the quiet partner right right the the more intense they become the louder exactly. they become right exactly, yeah. if I could teach the quiet one mm -hmm. to bring the intense one down mm -hmm. to not get scared because mm -hmm. that's what happens they get scared and then they avoid they stonewall yeah or yeah. they run away yeah now, i'm not saying this is the answer no no but i'm just that would be great but, if but i could one approach teach. perhaps again you know people are people this is just a, a blank case i don't know the people yeah. but uh one approach might be uh, if they're both willing to sit, close their eyes, and if they're close enough that they're willing to hold hands, that even helps, but even if not, uh, and this sounds a little bit strange, but ask her and remind her, or not remind her, but just notice you're a very calm person. You're amazingly calm. To so start to frame it as that positive aspect, she's very calm, and invite her to almost project that calm sensation into the chair next to you, into your husband. Okay. Do that with the intense one. Both of them are sitting there. Yeah. I'm talking to the wife. 
She's sending it over. And then the husband, you have incredible energy. You have incredible energy, you know, vitality. See if you can send a little bit of that over to her. Now, in a way, it kind of creates a sense of empathy and giving, because I'm also talking to the husband while I'm talking to her. Oh, of course. And talking to her while I'm talking to the husband. But it, it, in that particular situation, that might be a way I go just to, and, and you know, with hypnosis, like with therapy, we try numbers of things yeah. to see what fits the person, you know? I don't have like a set of techniques. You're gonna do A, B, C, and that's gonna work with everybody. Mm -hmm. We know that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But there are some things that have been developed by people in our profession that do tend to help a lot of people, and we will work with that. But um, it is a challenge when you work with a couple like that. People in chronic pain, too, especially. Pain is one of those areas that hypnosis shows the most consistent positive use. Uh -huh. Okay, That people are able to do more, feel more comfortable, to engage in more activities. Right. Uh, as they do this as a practice, along with other things. Well, I remember I took this uh, John Kabat-Zinn mm -hmm. uh, mindfulness right, meditation right. workshop, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he does a lot with yes. uh, people in chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And one thing he got us to do was to notice the moments when we're not in pain. Because mm -hmm. even though people say mm -hmm. it hurts all the time, right, right. it doesn't really. Right. I mean, if you're not aware of it, if you're focused on something else, if you're focused on playing with your grandchild, mm -hmm. or you're focused mm -hmm. on having sex, like when I had back pain, mm -hmm. it, I, it was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I wasn't paying attention no. to it. And this is where hypnosis comes in, this very concept you just told me. A lot of people can't consciously say, I can't notice that, There's, it hurts all the time. But when they go inside a little bit, and start to tap into their brain's ability to focus, just like you did, the thoughts weren't distracting you. Because right. you were very, you were too busy being involved in this interesting experience. And as they do that, they start to notice, oh, I do have these interesting experiences. These experiences where I'm actually feeling a little better. But of course, you know, when I'm feeling terrible, that tends to close my eyes and if I tap into my brain I can open my eyes to what's really happening to the comfort that actually is there and then I noticed when I had my back pain that there's definitely a connection mm -hmm. between pain and depression mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the back pain lasted for about a year and a half I had to change professions mm -hmm. because of mm -hmm. thank goodness <laughs> that was the benefit I didn't know it at the time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but the feeling that the pain is not going to ever go away is what caused the depression, which I think was worse than the pain. That's right. Because right. when, you, when you have the notion in your head mm -hmm. that this is my life, mm -hmm. you want to say, I don't want it. Yeah, of course not. And partly that's due to a phenomena where people feel the pain is bigger than they are. It just dominates their whole life. Right. And, the, and I told you this book I'm writing, self-help book for people in pain, I call it, You Are Bigger Than the Pain. Uh -huh. And as you use techniques like hypnosis, you start to make this discovery. I can't tell you how many people in the classes that I've done, I'm doing some here, but when I was working for Kaiser and doing these groups, five groups a week, and people would come in very pessimistic, so we'll just try it. And they tried it, and within a couple of weeks, even if they didn't practice regularly at home, but they did some, they started to discover that they felt better. I mean, they actually felt the thing that most people in pain or having other kinds of conditions feel, it's terrible, they feel powerless. When they do these things, you feel you have some control in your life. Right. And it's amazing, because it's a paradox. The control is letting go of control to some degree by just sitting down, focusing your attention in a certain way. You know, when you talk about the control, I think of um, another technique, uh, uh, it's called thought feel therapy. Right, right, yeah. Right, and there's a, another offshoot emotional freedom technique, right, I think they call right, it. Right, right, mm -hmm. Where, as part of the therapy, at first they ask you to, whatever it is you're trying to get rid of, let's say it's anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. Certain triggers bring on the anxiety. For me, it used to be getting a shot. Oh, yeah, me too. Well, <laughs> you know, or I, I would... All it took was stepping into the doctor's office and I would turn white as a sheet, yep, yep. right? Get cold and feel like I was going to 
pass out, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we practice that technique. And the first step is, okay, imagine yourself going to get a shot. Create the anxiety. Mm -hmm. And the paradox is, mm -hmm. I think your brain realizes, if you can create the anxiety, mm -hmm. you can uncreate it. <laughs> no, absolutely. A lot of these techniques, even the EMDR, have hypnotic elements to them, or they are hypnosis in a way. In fact, I recommend, and I'll say to them directly, all of you therapists out there, anybody working with people to help them, learning some hypnosis is going to really help you help them, because a lot of hypnosis is about communication. And communicating to you, how do I tell you walking into the doctor's office is safe? Well, let's imagine what that might look like. Mm -hmm. Uh, or imagine even what it's like and then doing the other distracting kind of technique and you're feeling okay even though you're holding in your, your imagination this scary thing, it becomes less scary. You know, uh, that's another way it works. So... They're telling me that uh, we got to wrap it up. Okay. And uh, I feel like we've just scratched the surface. We got to do some more. And... Um, if somebody wanted to, a therapist wanted mm -hmm. to learn some hypnosis, is there any place on the island you can learn? You know, I don't think there are any classes that I'm aware of. In fact, I've been thinking about doing a... Teaching a class? Yeah, doing a continuing education, at least that a workshop. That would be awesome. Just because, uh, you know, because um, I need to do, uh, I need to increase my skills too, and I have to go to the mainland for that. Yeah. One thing I will suggest is Michael Yapko's book, uh, I believe it's Essentials of Hypnosis. It's a little book. It's a good intro uh -huh. uh, to hypnosis, uh, and it would be very useful. Um, and how do they reach you? 808-633-6569. Uh, 808-633-6569, or <clears throat> my website. You can just type in comfortclinic.org, and you'll find my website. Thank you, Daniel. My pleasure. Thank you, and thank okay. you, everybody. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah. <clears throat>